Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. In today's session, we will be looking at uh, 10 common interview questions that you can expect for the CloudFormation service that we have in AWS. Now, AWS CloudFormation is a very powerful service that we have, which is mainly used for managing our infrastructure by making use of code. So whenever we talk about uh, managing the infrastructure, creating the infrastructure using code. In AWS, we have this service called CloudFormation. All right, so this is a very important uh, uh, service that we have in AWS. Now, if you're preparing for an interview or simply want to deepen your knowledge of CloudFormation, then you're in the right place. Um, once again, before I start off the session, please don't forget to hit that uh, subscribe button. Now, what is CloudFormation? So it's it's simply your infrastructure as code. So we can use it to uh, create your infrastructure by writing your code either in the YAML language or in the JSON um, language. So instead of setting up the infrastructure manually, we can make use of your code to set up the infrastructure. Now let's dive into the top 10 AWS questions that you can expect from uh, this CloudFormation service. So the first question we have is, uh, what is AWS CloudFormation and why um, is it you? So like I said, your CloudFormation, it's a service in AWS. So it's an infrastructure as code service that we have in AWS. And this mainly helps us to define and provision our infrastructure in AWS by making use of code. Now this infrastructure is created in a safe, consistent and automated manner. So Every time I want to uh, create the infrastructure, it is, it's going to be consistent because we're using the same piece of code and you can automate this as well. So that, for example, let's say I want to create one EC2 instance, one S3 bucket, one IAM role. So by making use of a piece of code, I can automate the creation of all of these um, uh, resources. So this is used to manage and deploy your resources, the AWS resources. And here we make use of your templates. So the scripts, uh, that, that we have in CloudFormation, we call it as your templates. And this enables the organizations to create an update infrastructure by making use of your code. So whenever we talk about setting up your infrastructure by making use of your code, CloudFormation is the service that we have. The second question we have is explain the components of CloudFormation template. So what are the different uh, um, uh, sections or different components we have in a cloud formation. So your cloud formation template, it consists of several components. So we have the uh, format version, version, we have the parameters, we have resource blocks, we have outputs block, and then we have also, we also have an optional uh, metadata block. So there are different, different sections, different, different uh, components when we are um, creating our uh, code, the infrastructure as code. So here I have some uh, example code. So for example, if you look at this, so this is a JSON uh, script that we have. So I have the uh, format version. I have the parameters uh, uh, section. Then I should have the uh, uh, resources section. So likewise, we have your outputs and metadata as well. So parameters, it mainly allows for customization of your resources. The resource block is used to define the components that we want to create outputs provides the information about the resources that we have created after the deployment and then metadata includes template level information so each of these uh, component has different different um, uh, uh, usage so parameters is whenever we want to customize the code resources is to create the resources for example here i'm creating a security group i'm i'm creating a vpc subnet so all of these goes in the resource blocks and if you want to customize your resources it goes in your parameters block so likewise we have different different components the next question we have is what is a cloud formation stack and how is it created now your cloud formation stack is simply collection of your AWS resources and these collection, these multiple AWS resources together, we call it as your stack. So it's a single unit of your resources. For example, uh, I have a CloudFormation template which creates an EC2 instance, S3 bucket and then AWS Lambda. 
Now, when I create that infrastructure, I will call that as your cloud formation stack. For example, here in this resource block, we are creating an instance profile, a security group, and then different different resources. So when I execute this script, the collection of these resources together, we call it as your stack, right? So stacks are uh, created by submitting the uh, cloud formation uh, template. So, you know, like I said, we make use of the template. So the template is nothing but your scripts, right? So um, in, in AWS, uh the the code that we write we call it as your cloud formation template now we can execute this either through the console the aws console that we have so here you can go to the cloud formation uh, service and you can start creating your uh, stack so you need to give your uh, template and then you can start executing it or you can also do it via CLI or SDKs as well. So there are different different options. Now stacks can be updated to modify your existing resources or add new ones. So you can modify your existing infrastructure or you can add new resources to the existing infrastructure. All those things can be done. The next question we have is how do you handle dependencies between resources in a cloud formation template? Now your cloud formation automatically handles the dependencies for you to a certain level for example let's say uh, in this case in this particular uh, uh, template i am creating a, a vpc i'm creating a security group um, and then i'm also launching an ec2 instance now how does your um, uh, cloud formation um, you know make sure that okay first the vpc should be created then the ec2 should be created the security group should be created the order in which the resources needs to be created now that is handled automatically so your cloud formation is intelligent enough to handle these dependencies automatically however if you still want to explicitly manage that we can make use of this depends on attribute in your uh, cloud formation template so for more complex scenarios we can uh, make use of this and using this depends on we can specify the dependencies between the resources for example first i want the um, uh, s3 bucket to be created or i want the im uh, resources to be created so i can make use of your depends on to control that order or the dependencies between these different different resources that's how we can handle it the next question we have is what are cloud formation parameters and why are they important now cloud formation parameters that's one of the component that we have for your cloud formation template and this mainly allows when uh, you want to customize your template without modifying the actual code so basically when you want to get inputs from the users you can make use of your parameters for that so uh, these parameters they provide us the flexibility and allows the same template to be used with uh, different configuration so let's say for example you have uh, two different projects uh, let's say project a and project b now project a runs in vpc1 project b runs in vpc2 now instead of creating two different cloud formation template we can have one common template for both the projects but then we can make use of these parameters to get the input from the user so let's say when the when the uh, people in project one are submit uh, executing the code they can provide uh, their resources at vpc1 likewise when you have people in project two when they are executing the code they can provide vpc2 as their network so that kind of customization can be done by making use of your parameter so here again if you see for example i have few uh, parameters i have key name i have instance type i have image ami so all these are um, user inputs that i will be taking when i'll be executing this uh, particular code so that's where your parameters are uh, useful and it's a very important uh, feature that you have for your cloud formation templates the next question we have is explain the use of aws cloud formation change sets now chain sets can be used when you want to modify or you want to make any changes to your existing cloud formation stack 
now the 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 good feature of this chain set is that it also allows you to preview your uh, changes before applying them so chain sets it mainly allows you to get a preview of the changes that you are uh, proposing and if you're okay with those changes then you can go ahead and apply them so that's basically what your chain sets are for example let's say you have created an infrastructure an ec2 instance and you've attached a security group one but now uh, you want to change that and add a security group two. However, uh, instead of directly making those changes, you want to preview that. You want to make sure that you're attaching the right security group. So that's where we can make use of your chain set. So what chain set does is it gives us a preview of the changes that we are proposing. And only when we confirm that we are okay with those changes, chain sets will start executing or it will start applying those changes for us. So they provide uh, a way to understand the impact of these changes, view the differences we have, and then ex and then execute or discard the changes based on the review. So we get to review the changes that uh, we are about to make. The next question we have is, what is the difference between the uh, fn colon colon ref and fn colon colon get add functions in cloud formation? So these are basically your functions that we can make use of in your cloud formation templates so the ref function is used to get the value of the specified parameter or the resource while the get add function is used to get the value of the attribute for a, from a resource in the template for example the ref function can be used to get the logical id of the resource that um, we are going to create logical id when i say uh, it could be your instance ID or it could be your um, um, any information uh, that you know the parameters that we are passing if you want to know what parameters that we have passed we can get that by making use of your ref function and your get at attribute can be used to get information such as your EC2's public DNS name the public IP address or the private IP address or uh, the um, uh, subnet in which it is running so all that information if you want to get you can make use of your get at function okay the next question we have is how can you roll back a failed update in cloud formation now your cloud formation automatically handles the uh, rollback status for you so if something goes wrong with the template that we are executing Cloud formation automatically will roll back. So it will basically delete all the resources that it has created. And then once we fix the issue, we can uh, re-trigger the uh, stack creation. By default, cloud formation handles that. So let's say, for example, So here, if you see the stack failure options, roll back all stack resources. So by default, that is what will happen if there's an issue. The, the cloud formation will do a rollback automatically. Now, um, you, if you're uh, creating this infrastructure from the CLI, you can make use of this hyphen hyphen rollback hyphen on hyphen error option uh, when using the CLI to explicitly specify the rollback behavior. So by default, if you're using the console, the rollback feature is enabled. Uh, if you're using the CLI, we can pass this option uh, which will enable the rollback. So if there's any issue with the template that we're executing, cloud formation will automatically do a rollback and uh, delete all the resources that it has created. The next question we have is what is the purpose of uh, uh, AWS cloud formation in it metadata in the cloud formation template now this is part of your metadata sanction uh, section and this is used with your cloud formation helper scripts to install any packages or write any files or enable any services on an EC2 instance. So let's say you're creating an EC2 instance and uh, if you want to do some operations on that EC2 instance, we can make use of this cloud formation in it part uh, in your metadata section. So maybe you want to install some packages or 
you want to start some services we can do that by making use of this in it um, uh, metadata so this simplifies the process of configuring instances during the stack creation so you know performing certain operations configuring the instances all those things can be done uh, uh, during the stack creation by making use of this metadata section part the next question we have is how do you secure sensitive information such as passwords in a cloud formation template now whenever we talk about your sensitive uh, data so we have services like systems manager and uh, uh, secrets manager that we can use to store these uh, sensitive information so basically it is recommended that we don't hard code or we don't maintain this sensitive information in the template rather we make use of these services to store the sensitive information and then in the template we can make use of the sub function or the import value function to get these values from the systems manager service or the secrets manager service without exposing this uh, uh, sensitive data directly in the template so that's basically how we can handle and uh, make use of the sensitive information uh, within the template so we should never uh, hard code or we should never have any sensitive information within the template rather we should use the appropriate services in aws and then we can use this uh, respective functions to uh, fetch those values from the services the systems manager service and the secrets manager service to uh, use those sensitive um, data so there you have it um, that concludes our top 10 aws cloud formation interview questions and answers i hope i hope you found this video very helpful and if you have any questions or if there's a specific if there is a specific topic you would like us to uh, cover in the future, please let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to like the video and uh, subscribe to our channel and ring the bell for notifications. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.